Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and welcome to Paris. So we took an overnight flight from Philly to Charles de Gaulle Airport, which takes roughly seven and a half hours in the air, which isn't that bad to get here. Isn't there such lovely lighting? Ooh, it's so echoey here in the bathroom. It's so good. It's, it's actually a pretty big bathroom. We're actually cruising at 39,000 feet over the Atlantic Ocean on our way to Paris. Check this out. You got like accent lighting in here. I can do my hair. Boom. Currently, we cannot exit the airport as there is a bomb scare where there's a dog sniffing a package and they have to remove it. So, there's that. So what am I gonna do while I'm here? There's a bunch of sights to see, like the Eiffel Tower. We've got Soccer Coeur, we've got the Louvre where you've got Mona Lisa and a ton of other pieces of art. And I wanna see if she's gonna stare at me intently when I'm trying to take pictures of her. And also we're gonna climb to the top of Notre Dame. So there's a lot to get done here, but what are my main focuses while I'm here? One, I want to get stock images. Why? Because stock images are good to sell on Adobe stock. They are sponsoring this trip, so a big thank you to them. But also, I'm going to go ahead and do time-lapse video as well as slow motion video because Adobe has a long list of topics that they're looking for contributors to contribute different things for. So some of those things are time-lapse and slow motion. And you can do any of that stuff anywhere in the world, no matter where you are. You don't need to be in Paris. You could be sitting in a cornfield in middle America, shooting stock video, stock photos, stock time-lapse, whatever you need. So if you wanna become a contributor to Adobe Stock, go to the link on the screen right now, and you can start possibly making money with your B-roll. Wouldn't it be awesome to go on vacation, take photos, take video, and pay for your trip? Yeah, check it out. But that's it for now. Let's go take a tour of Paris. Right behind me is the Cathedral of Notre Dame where up in the tower a famous person once lived named Lou Holtz. No, it was actually a guy named Quasimodo. Now the construction started in 1163 and didn't finish until the 1300. So it took quite a while to build this extremely amazing cathedral in Gothic architecture. Now what's cool about it is that they have these flying buttresses that hold up the outer walls because as they were building it, they realized that they started to get some stress fractures in the walls, which meant they needed to then come up with another way to structurally engineer the building, the cathedral, so it didn't collapse on itself. And that's when they came up with the flying buttresses, which are awesome. So what I'm doing right now is a time-lapse video with the D850. Now the reason I'm doing that in front of the Cathedral of Notre Dame is because I want to get this long line of people blurry. I want them to blur as they go in, so that means I'm slowing the shutter speed down, way down, further than it should be going, but, but I'm doing that to allow some motion blur to show that people are moving. Plus, if they're moving and you can't recognize them, then there's a better possibility that I can use it for stock footage on Adobe Stock. Now, I'm not sure about a model release for the uh, Notre Dame here behind me, but I'll find that out later if it gets rejected. But at least this way, I'm gonna do a cool time lapse and you won't be able to recognize the people, hopefully. All right, here we go. So if you are coming to Paris and you wanna go to Notre Dame, make sure you download the app. The link is up on the screen where you can get a time to come back in line so you don't have to wait at the kiosk or show up and then all of a sudden you're told nope it's full for the day so you do need to get a ticket to wait in line luckily i downloaded the app and we waited four hours but we didn't stand outside for four hours we waited four hours then we showed up and then we got right in line and we weren't upset like these people Oh, so 84 steps just to get to buy tickets. Okay, let's see how many stairs there are. No, 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 there's more. Okay, I got my workout for the day. That's a lot of stairs. Thank you for joining me on that climb. 
But now that we've reached the top, we finally get to see the Eiffel Tower from afar, but it's okay. Now, if you do climb up to the towers of Notre Dame, just be aware that behind you is a fence that's gonna be difficult to shoot through unless you have a long piece of glass. So if you wanna get a cool scene from up here, you're gonna need a long piece of glass because it's hard to shoot through this mesh or a cell phone where you could just fit it between the mesh and zoom in. Guys, you gotta get to the top of the cathedral to see the bells. I know we've got the Liberty Bell in Philly, but this is kind of like the Liberty Bell on steroids. And it only rings on special days, tomorrow, for Easter. So I thought we counted all the stairs, I was wrong. There's another level. We're going up. <sighs> That's a lot of stairs. We, 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 we got to the, we got to the top. Here's what it looks like. This gargoyle's eating something. I don't know what it is. Is it a fish? I just realized we have to now walk down stairs too, so only climb the Notre Dame Cathedral if you are in good shape or can walk upstairs. And that's it. That's the cathedral. This is Saka No? This is Sacra No? Yeah? Uh huh, what is it? This is Sacra No? Sacra In Sacred Heart, alright? It's right behind me. After walking over two miles from where we were, we got to the top of Sac Coeur. We had to climb many, many steps, and it seems like in Paris, the key to everything is walking and climbing, and then walking some more, and then and then climbing, and then walking some more. But now we're here at Sac Coeur. So I'm doing another time lapse now because I don't have a neutral density filter to fit the 14 to 24. I went to low one, so that's like uh, ISO. 50 or 30 or 32 or something. So that's what I'm trying out right here with this. Um, we'll see how it turns out. So I wouldn't be afraid to set up your time lapses where people are walking. Just make sure they're not standing in front of you or just gently give them a, a excuse me, could you move to that side or could you move that way? Uh, it's all right if they're there for a second or two, but you don't want people standing in front of your time lapse for like 20, 30 seconds at a time because they're gonna be in a bunch of the images, but it's okay to set up. Just get the shot and don't worry about if you're in anybody's way, in all honesty get the shot. As long as you're not putting yourself in harm's way or anybody else in harm's way, just go ahead and do it. Oh, and the reason I keep looking down over here is I don't want my camera to be stolen. So one good thing you could do to protect your time lapse is stand kind of over it, but not in the way so you're protecting it. Check this out. See? So I asked Maddie over here to help me with video and she says it's embarrassing. And I'm telling her, you just do it and don't care what anybody else thinks because you're getting the shot. And who cares if it's embarrassing? It's not embarrassing. You need to get the shot. You need to get the shot. So the things with these time lapses is I sometimes let them go for 15 minutes just to make sure I get stuff in there. Uh, so it does take time. You have to be patient when you're doing the time lapse, but it really will add an extra couple of three, four, five good seconds of video or transitions into your final product. I like how the time lapse turned out. The, the lines are pretty straight. The line of people walking is straight. There's a lot of just moving. So there's a good amount of movement there. So I'm happy with how this time lapse turned out. This type of time lapse could be used for a lot of different things. Could be movies, could be commercials. You never know where it's gonna be purchased. So you might as well just go out there and shoot it.
also there's like a father and some kids playing soccer in the park. I want to get some slow-mo video, so I'm going to go up and ask if it's okay, uh, even with the language barrier, so we'll see. Do you mind if I take some slow motion video? Oh, of, of us? Of you playing soccer. I'm making a video of Paris. Yeah. yeah. Good? Okay. Good. Thank you. So that's it. Just go up and ask. If you want to do something, ask. Now you'd be prepared if somebody says no that you don't do it, but in this case I wanted to get some video slow motion and I asked and they said sure, go ahead. And it also was a good opportunity to strike up a conversation, find out a little bit about somebody in Paris, really, really cool. So that's it. If you're wondering what part of Paris I stayed in, I stayed in La Marais. Now I picked up an Airbnb for about 130 bucks a night that has super fast internet, a place for me to cook my breakfast and eggs in the morning so I don't have to spend extra money, and a really cool location that's around so many things. I can walk within 20, 25 minutes to everything, except for the Eiffel Tower, that thing's 3.4 miles away, but on the Metro, it's really fast, and also, you can protect yourself from pickpocketers by keeping your hands in your pocket. If you've ever looked into Paris, all everybody's been warning me about are the pickpocketers, so be vigilant and be careful. But if you're traveling somewhere, this isn't an ad for Airbnb, this is just telling you that I love what it, it creates. The ability to embed yourself in a town like you live there with the locals. You end up seeing the same people every day. You see the same waiters and waitresses and you sit in the same cafes and have coffee and tea and it makes you feel like you're part of a community. Whereas with a hotel, hotels are great, but they tend to be more expensive in these areas and it's not as fun as just staying in somebody's apartment, which I'm doing right now. So that's my recommendation. If you're traveling around, look into Airbnb or any of those other sites that offer rentals of cool places. So the street performers make for some interesting slow motion video, so I hope I got some good stuff. Now you see me sitting out front, that's me getting up close because I wanted to get a good spot and I'm not afraid to get close, but you just have to be careful. Of course, some people may not want their photo taken, but this, you know, street performers are a great opportunity to get some shots. Don't be afraid to go up to the front because you need to get closer, you need to get your spot, and also don't block other people. But also at the very end, throw a couple of shekels their way for giving you the opportunity to capture some interesting images. One of the keys to slow motion video is a variable ND filter. That's right, variable because you can change it depending on the light and what it does is it allows you to cut back on the amount of light coming in to the camera so you're not shooting video at F22. I'm able to shoot at 2.8 right now and I believe it 64 ISO because I'm able to control the amount of light coming in through the lens because of the variable neutral density filter. Now that's why I'm able to get this, the shallow depth of field at 2.8 when doing video and not shoot something at F22 at 64 ISO where everything's in infinite focus and it just doesn't look as good or as cinematic. So general rule of thumb, if you're gonna be outside shooting video, definitely look into a variable ND filter. So 
So I needed to take a personal quick time out to come back to the room to regroup because what I realized is that I'm trying to do too much. I'm trying to make the vlog, I'm trying to shoot still images, I'm trying to get time lapse, I'm trying to get video. I'm doing too much. I need to slow down and focus on one thing at a time. And so that is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dump a bunch of gear here, leave it in the room, and just try to go out and focus on one thing. And if that one thing is, I'm gonna take a 24 to 70 2.8 and just the D850 to shoot, then that's what I'm gonna focus on and that's what I need to do because I'm overwhelming myself. So the, the tip, the recommendation is if you have a lot that you want to accomplish, try to do one thing at a time and don't overwhelm yourself like I'm doing right now. Right behind me on this wall at the Louvre is the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Now, there's a lot of people that wait in line to see this. You'll see a lot of selfies being taken. You'll see a lot of cell phone pictures being taken, but I figured I would show you it because it's one of the most famous paintings ever in the world. So this is where having a tilting rotatable screen actually comes in handy because you can hold it up, put that VR or IS on and take some pictures. Not that it's interesting to get a picture of the Mona Lisa because you can probably download a better high res one on the internet. So here is my review of the Louvre. Tons of walking, tons of selfies, tons of selfie sticks, tons of tourists, tons of people, lots of walking and the Mona Lisa. So one thing you'll notice inside of the Louvre is other than it being huge and massive, if you laid it end to end, it would be eight miles of walking. There are so many tourists going around. I've never seen so many people inside of one museum at one time, which makes it kind of difficult if you're there for the art to really enjoy anything that's going on. Plus a lot of selfie sticks, a lot of selfies being taken, a lot of kids falling asleep, a lot of old people falling asleep because they're just tired from all of the extra walking. But then, there's the Mona Lisa. So at the Louvre, they have the most famous painting in the world, the Mona Lisa, which is now important because a lot of people take selfies in front of it with the Mona Lisa behind them. There's, I'm not a big fan of that, but my goal in there was to get some time-lapse footage, which didn't exactly work out because it's too cramped and there's too many people, so putting the camera down low wouldn't have worked. But what I did do is hold the vlogging camera up higher using the tilt-down screen to go for about two minutes, so hopefully that gives me a maybe like three seconds of time-lapse footage. Hopefully that works out well, but also some stills of people up front, along with some slow motion video of people looking at the Mona Lisa, and then some images of the Mona Lisa from in the back where I held up the camera with the D850, and because of the tilt-down screen, I was able to frame it and see it better and get a higher angle to get the Mona Lisa in there, and you can see that she's looking at me. She's looking so close and intent on me, and then now she's looking at you. Yeah, her eyeballs, they're always following me. So while I was getting some video of the Mona Lisa and people there, I was stopped by two security guards, not uh, but toi. No, that's three. Duh. There were two security guards that uh, came up to me and were asking what I was doing because they saw me pull out two different cameras. One was for stills and one was for video, not at the same time. And they're trying to say that I need authorization in order to do what I was doing. And I'm like, I'm just a tourist. Yes, I'm a professional photographer and I know what I'm doing and I look the part, but I'm just a tourist on vacation taking photos and video for personal use and I don't need authorization, and I'm not selling them. That was part of their concern was, one, am I selling them, and two, I'm videoing people there. But I, I did it, I said, that's fine, and they let me go because I wasn't selling it. So anyway, you just need to just do your thing, try to be as respectful as possible, get the shot, ask for forgiveness, not permission, and then you're good to go. So as I've said before, I'm here to do slow motion video, time lapses, and photos, and I'm still running into issues where I'm trying to do too much. That's why I'm about to head out right now with only the D850 and the 35 1.4. I'm taking these two things out, no vlogging camera, nothing else. I'll put the GoPro on top just so that Dan could use it for the video, and I'm gonna focus on stills. 
I'm not taking the 24 to 72.8. If this doesn't work out for me to get a good photo story, then I'll have to come out and do this another time with the 24 to 70. But now, let's see how I do with this 3514. Roll those photos. So do you want to know the secret to street photography? It's called don't make eye contact. I'm not even looking at you right now, look. Look, wasn't even making eye contact with you, so that's the point. As soon as you make eye contact with somebody that you're photographing, they get upset because then they're gonna wanna know why are you shooting them. But if you divert your eyes, like you're looking past them, or you're looking up at something, that's how you do street photography. Now some may say that's, that's not right and you shouldn't try to take people's pictures like that, but if you wanna get good street photos, you have to play that game. You have to stand there and you have to make pretend you're not looking at them because it, it works out much better. So going out with just that 3514 was definitely a challenge because it's a very limiting lens. You have to get close to your subjects in order to get a good composition and framing. And in order to do that, you kind of have to ask permission if it's somebody or something you're trying to photograph. Like when I photographed the dog at the cafe, I was wandering around for about an hour and hadn't really found any images and then saw the dog. And I was like, I gotta ask for permission because if I don't do this now, I'm not gonna get the images with this 35 for this section. They said, sure. So I spent a good two minutes photographing the dog, showed them the photos, and I was happy with the results that I got. And then when I walked down the street, saw another dog at a cafe and then another one crossing the street. And that started a little bit of a series right there of dogs in the town where I am at. And I thought it ended up turning out pretty well. So the moral of the story is it's, it's not easy to go out there with just one lens and force yourself to get the images or to find images because they just don't happen that fast. But what I was able to capture with the 3514 on my walk, I think turned out really well. Can you still submit stock images and video even if you don't get a model release? And the answer is yes, because you don't need a model release if you can't recognize the person in the video or in the photo. For example, when I was at the cafe photographing the dog on the sidewalk, you couldn't recognize the person, so I could submit that to Adobe Stock because you don't have a recognizable person in there. Also, I did something like photographing or taking slow motion of somebody tapping the cigarette as they're ashing it. That's another thing that you can do is shoot things that aren't recognizable. People walking, people's backs of their heads, anything that makes them not recognizable, you can use it for stock video and stock images. Oh, here come horses. Watch out. I was gonna walk straight down the street, but then I saw horses coming. You wanna stay out of the way of horses. They will run you over. You need to smell the waffles here, guys. This smells so good. So here's some quick facts about the Eiffel Tower, which is the most visited paid monument in the world with close to 7 million people going a year. Now construction started in 1887 and completed in 1889 for the Paris World's Fair. Now it's over a thousand feet to the top, to the tip of the top, and in the old days you used to have to climb over 1700 stairs to get to the very top, but also it was the tallest building until 1930 when the Chrysler Building in New York City dethroned owned it and that was it but it's still the tallest building in Paris so there's that and those are your facts about the Eiffel Tower and this is construction will look very nice when it's done though so I understand with the construction going on at the Eiffel Tower and that truck that's back there 
that I'm not gonna get something really amazing. But I'm still gonna do the time lapse. I'm still gonna get a couple of photos just to have it. So that's just to let you know that it's not gonna be the most interesting, but I'm doing it anyway. And hopefully it doesn't blow over. So while I'm taking a time lapse video of the Eiffel Tower, I wanna talk about Adobe Stock and what I like about what they do on their site. And the truth of the matter is no matter where you are in the world, you can go create stock images. You can shoot the birds in the park. You can shoot a setup shot in front of a background. You could shoot a goldfish in a freaking bowl. That would work. So try it out. You never know what could happen. You may make some money with stock video and stock photos. So the time lapse just finished after 15 minutes. Let's give it a watch and hopefully it doesn't suck. Okay. Okay. I know what I did wrong. You know what I did wrong? I didn't make it a super slow shutter speed. Now I gotta start all over again. Oh boy. Oh boy, that was stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Have that checklist. Slow shutter speed. Now it just looks like I sped up the damn video. Shoot. Time lapses can take a while to do, but they're well worth it. Here's something about travel photos. You're probably not gonna get something much different than what other people have already gotten before you, but there's nothing wrong with taking the classic shot of Paris or the classic shot of New York. Just get it for yourself because sometimes it feels good just to get that shot. It doesn't matter if somebody's already done it. You can do it and then you can try something different and get creative with it. So we've chosen to take 674 steps up the Eiffel Tower until we cannot walk any further. Then we need to take the elevator. So here we go. Ready? Okay, this is just the first story of the Eiffel Tower. Over five minutes to climb that. Now we're gonna go to the next story and then we get to take an elevator. I'm over six minutes in. And here we go to the next set of stairs. Whew. <sighs> 12 minutes, 15 seconds. Up to the top, to the second floor. And now we need to go to the elevator. I'll take a break and show you some of the sights. Now we are in the queue to go up the escalator. No, it would be an elevator. Now if we had to walk all the way to the top, it would be over 1,100 stairs. I could do it. It'd take about 20 minutes or more, but we could do it. I think they'll let us? No, they won't let us. We have to go up in the elevator. Today's forecast at the top of the Eiffel Tower, windy. Second observation from the top of the Eiffel Tower, rain. How's it look? Does it look windy? Is my hair okay? So good. So good. Look, look. Oh, it's Paris. Don't stick that out there. Did you see the sign? Uh, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Maddie! Maddie! I, it's so windy up here. It's windy. Bienvenue! <laughs> Bienvenue! She doesn't like when I make that face.
As with many tourist attractions, it's a good idea to get there early, because if you don't get there early, you're gonna wait in line for a long time. One of the things I was warned about in Paris are the people that come up to you and say, excuse me, do you speak English? They, uh, thank you, me too. They speak English, the people that walked by me, but they come up and they try to get you to sign stuff and then they try to steal stuff from you. So she goes, do you speak English? No, I do not speak English. It's true. Welcome to beautiful Versailles, is what I would actually be saying if we were at Versailles, but we are not because the trains were on strike and there was no easy way to get there at the time we wanted to get there, so I'm back here in the courtyard at the Louvre to do some time-lapse video that I haven't had a chance to do just yet, so I figured improvise, let's make some time-lapse videos and try not to screw it up again. So here we go, let's see how it looks. So sometimes on trips things don't go your way and other times they just happen like happy accidents. In this case, because we couldn't get out to Versailles, you have to improvise, we had to improvise, and just move on to something else. And that's why I'm utilizing my time to get more time lapses. So you may be asking yourself, why am I not shooting with my 14 to 24 to get that 14 millimeter wide angle? Now that's initially what I wanted to do out here, but I don't have any square neutral density filters to put over that lens. You can't just screw a filter onto that particular lens. You need a, a, a filter holder and you need the square drop-in filters to make that work. Unlike with the Canon, they actually have filters that go in the back of the lens, which makes it easier when you're trying to do that. But the reason I'm not doing it is I couldn't get a slow enough shutter speed to enable me to get that nice smooth blurring factor that I want to get. Uh, if I was to just shoot it normally, it would just look like video sped up fast and I want to get some motion blur in there in the clouds because the clouds are moving across the sky. So I'm shooting with a cool angle at 24 millimeters with the 24 to 70 and the variable neutral density filter on that. Now since we didn't make it out to Versailles, I wonder what Adobe stock has in store for us. Hmm. My girlfriend said she's cold and I have one chance to get this right, so it's her fault if it's not good, the pyramid at the Louvre with the reflections in the clouds going by. With a heavier camera like the D850 with the grip on it and a 24 to 70, I like to put the Gorilla Pod flat. There's one stanchion up in the front, so it's got some stability there, it's got stability there, and it's got stability there, and I lock it in to get my time lapse. So I think I noticed the camera wobbling a little bit, so I'm gonna act as a windbreak and hopefully stop the wind from wobbling it a little bit, hopefully. You ever notice that time-lapse on the D850 is like playing the game Snake? Except it can never catch its own tail. Huh. 
So as I'm packing my bags to head back to Philly, I wanted to sit here and talk about the content that I was making because my goal with this trip was to make a vlog that had slow motion video, time lapse video, and photos mixed in. And photos seemed to be the third of the three things to focus on. I didn't do as many photos. Now some may say, how do you go to Paris and not focus on getting photos? Well, for me, I like to photograph specific subjects. Say it's a band sitting at a cafe. That gives me some context and an opportunity to capture images and tell a photo story of something, somebody in Paris. Now I was able to get some really cool images, whether it's the dogs sitting at the cafes or some of the reflections I got, but I would have liked to have told a better story. So I just think for me, it's having a context of photographing somebody in a situation would have given me the ability to get better images. But I'm very happy with the time lapses I got, though they could have been done a little better. After watching them, I would have liked to have done a longer shutter speed for some of the time lapses, meaning Instead of doing a half a second, I could have done a second to a second and a half or even two second exposures because that would have made the people blur a little more. And I had the ability to get that extra shutter speed because I had the ND filter, I could have made darker and I could have also bumped my aperture up a little higher. But after watching back some of the time lapses, I realized the wind was blowing pretty hard and did cause some shake in the camera, which means that maybe the second or two second exposures wouldn't have worked out as well because while the, the exposure was being made, the pyramid may have shifted and blurred. So maybe I did the right thing after all. We also didn't have the best weather while we were here. It was anywhere between 43 and 59 degrees and most days we had some sort of rain, which made it difficult to get some blue skies with nice clouds. Though on the last day I was able to get some of those type of images. So when it was raining, I used that opportunity to get some slow motion video of the raindrops or puddles or people walking by with their umbrellas and also people sitting at cafes getting them ashing their cigarette or smoking and, and there's a ton of different opportunities that I had for the slow motion and that's where I focused a lot of my attention. Making the B-roll that I could possibly sell on Adobe stock or upload to Adobe stock for the time lapse and the slow motion video and also some of the photos I think would work well as stock images also. But at the end of the day, I'm happy with the results that I got across the board. Of course I would change things in the future, but everything's a learning experience. It's all about putting a feather in your cap, trying things, doing a better job next time, making mistakes, and then improving upon it the next time you go out or travel somewhere else. So now it's time to head back to Philly, and I wanna thank all of you guys for watching. I wanna thank Adobe Stock for sponsoring this video, and don't forget that you can upload your images and videos to Adobe Stock and possibly make some money to just travel or shoot the things you're already shooting. So definitely go check it out, and I wanna thank you guys one more time. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.